So Svelte is an amazing UI framework for building reactive uh, UI uh, applications, you, reactive interf user interface for applications in a browser. Now, in fact, it's not a framework at all. It's uh, more of a, a compiler, really. But that's the thing. Uh, everybody else uh, competing with it is a framework, runtime framework, such as Angular, uh, view and react but uh, Svelte takes a different approach and it implements a compiler at compile time it takes your HTML CSS and JavaScript enhances it so that at runtime it reacts to any changes in JavaScript variables so today I want to talk to you about why learn Svelte uh, I recently did another video which, uh, which the title was how to learn Svelte uh, maybe I should have d done this one first, why learn Svelte? Uh, because you need some motivation to learn Svelte. And then uh, once you have watched this video, uh, hopefully you will have enough motivation. And then you can watch the other video, which is how to learn Svelte. Okay. And in that, I, I describe all the resources and uh, the roadmap and the process through which you should learn Svelte. It should take you only a couple of days, maybe maybe a week. Okay. So... Why learn Svelte? Because, uh, so in this video, I'm going to give you business justification. Uh, if you are a, a, an enterprise company or a manager or an IT manager, or um, you know a decision maker or an architect of any kind, then I will uh, hopefully be able to give you some business justification why you should implement your projects in Svelte and therefore learn Svelte or have your team learn Svelte. Second, I will talk about technical justification um, in terms of what are the good technical reasons, and there are too many of them, um, but I will discuss some of those uh, in this uh, video. And then finally, personal reasons. Why, as a developer, at a personal level, it pulls at your heartstrings and why it uh, makes you feel good about yourself. Um, uh, and that's the reason, uh, that's another category of reasons to learn Svelte. All right, let's get started. My name is Jitesh Doshi, and this is my YouTube channel uh, called Spinspire, which is at youtube.com slash Spinspire. Uh, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. Uh, this video, this sorry, this channel is dedicated to Svelte and related technologies. So you will, uh, we, we already have more than a couple of dozen Svelte videos, and I'll keep releasing more and more. Let's get into why learn Svelte. Business justification. Ready talent. So as a business, if you are writing your applications, you want to make sure that you have enough uh, developers in the market who can uh, use Svelte. You already have uh, Svelte developers in your organization. You just don't know it yet and they don't know it yet because Svelte is a very, very thin layer on top of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I'm sure you already have, if you are doing web applications, you already have uh, developers in your organization that already know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So if they know all those things, then they are 95% of the way already there. The, they have to learn very little in terms of Svelte um, and they uh, felt it adds has a very small API and all that. So the, so the learning curve is extremely uh, extremely easy. So that's why you have ready talent. You don't have to go into the market to hire new developers for Svelte. Then second thing is productivity. Your developers will be far more productive uh, if they are using Svelte than any other uh, framework, because Svelte again is truly reactive and it uh, it doesn't make your developers uh, learn too many things and uh, it has very low cognitive load and it's very natural the way you programming Svelte feels very natural so high productivity performance now Svelte a does not have virtual DOM so it, so it doesn't have to do the same work twice and it also produces very small bundles so therefore, your web applications will be better performance. And now there are on the internet, there are lots of uh, good um, benchmarks. So I would recommend you look at, uh, and I'll try to link to some of them in the show notes in the video description. And finally, the ecosystem. Now, let me be honest, the ecosystem 
could be um, bigger but then the thing is it uh, so there are lots of Svelte plugins Svelte related projects uh, things uh, Svelte components Svelte UI libraries lots of them there but the reality is because Svelte is so close to the metal in the sense that it it adds very little uh, a very thin layer to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Therefore, all JavaScript projects are already usable with Svelte. So that is why uh, the ecosystem is important uh, because it, it doesn't need much a very big ecosystem. And there is, of course, a great community. So these are the business justifications. I think if you are a company that uh, relies on web applications, that builds web applications for its own uh, operations, then Svelte would be a great technology to implement your applications in the front end. Next, technical justifications. Now there are, as I said, lots of good reasons. First of all, like I said, uh, Svelte is a very thin layer on top of JavaScript and HTML. And I emphasize thin because it, it already, it leverages HTML, JavaScript, and CSS and then adds only a very small uh, number of features to JavaScript and HTML and CSS, and then suddenly transforms your static HTML page into a reactive HTML page that reacts to JavaScript events and Java changes in JavaScript variables, etc. So that's number one. Number two, real reactivity. Like I said, uh, unlike uh, React, uh, the framework that bears reactivity in its own name, which is not actually reactive, while Svelte is truly reactive, you modify a variable and the page updates itself. And that's real reactivity. You do not have to uh, call a callback or a hook or um, a set state method or nothing like that. The compiler at compile time is analyzing your code, looking at you modifying uh, JavaScript variable, and then injects code around that your modifications such that it triggers uh, the update or re-rendering of the uh, relevant portions of the page. Only the relevant portion, portions, not all of it. Number three, compile time only. That's Svelte is not a runtime framework. It's a compiler. It's a compile time plugin to roll up or to Webpack. So Svelte is a, a, a UI compiler. It allows you to put uh, HTML, JavaScript, and uh, CSS in a very natural way. And then it looks for uh, where are you modifying these variables and compiles uh, the JavaScript, injects extra code into the JavaScript at compile time, such that at runtime, whenever those mod variables get modified, the uh, UI reacts to it. And then uh, number four, no virtual DOM. Unlike React and Angular and I think Vue as well, uh, but um, those guys, they have to use virtual DOM. They do the work twice. They first modify uh, a data structure in memory and then finally when all of those have been accumulated, they apply those changes to actual physical DOM. Svelte goes straight to physical DOM, but it also uh, batches up those changes. So, but it but it does that without virtual DOM. So again, less memory intensive and uh, better performance. More technical justifications. Uh, so I said it's a compile time framework, but that allows compiler plugins. So Svelte uh, has a pre-process step, and you can write Svelte preprocessor plugins as well as roll up uh, plugins. Uh, so these plugins basically enhance the behavior and the technical power of Svelte uh, because now in those uh, plugins you can, you know, like for example, you can, there are these uh, pre-process post uh, plugins that can, for example, implement SAS compilation of CSS or, uh, you know, TypeScript uh, to JavaScript transpilation. So all, and, and then there is more, right? It can do even more. Plus Rollup being a compiler framework or a bundler framework that allows more plugins to be written. So this is because Svelte focuses on compile time uh, action, It uh, you can do much more at compile time. And then of course at runtime, uh, you, can, you would have injected some compile time code that will execute at runtime. Then there is minimal API. 
this is another technical justification because uh, because the API is so small, there isn't uh, that much to learn, and it also performs better. There are small fewer primitives to learn, uh, so Swell just builds upon the basic JavaScript itself, and it adds a little bit to the basic API of JavaScript, um, and then operates and gives you real power and flexibility. And then uh, again, performance because it is uh, it doesn't have virtual DOM and it is at compile time. At runtime, its performance is better because it has been optimized at compile time. It's not wasting time at runtime to figure out what's going on in your page. Plus, it produces smaller bundles because it has no runtime presence really. Uh, so smaller bundles also help with performance. And then finally, did I say compile time? Yes, this is the third time I'm mentioning compiler or compile time. That is very important, important because, so that's the reason why I keep repeating. Uh, the, the compile time nature of Svelte is extremely important. It has lots of implications and it is the secret sauce. It's the secret of Svelte's power. All right, a few personal reasons. Why do I like Svelte? Um, it just makes me a better developer. It is, it makes me more productive. Uh, you should have these reasons. I mean, as a developer, what this will be, these will be your own personal reasons. Like, um, you want to be more productive. Now, Svelte is not necessarily the best uh, framework or compiler or UI technology to learn if all you want to do is get a job, because there aren't that many Svelte jobs out there and just yet. Uh, wait a little. But on a pro productivity level, Svelte makes you so productive because you are just writing HTML JavaScript and Svelte is simply adding reactivity. That's all it is. So, uh, so productivity is a big, big factor. And there's pleasure. Svelte is such a pleasure to use because with very minimal work, you get full reactivity and, and it doesn't have any, it doesn't add any cognitive load when you are developing for it. You don't have to think about hooks and set state and, and Redux and um, you know uh, reducers and uh, all kinds of uh, funky things, okay? It's just a pleasure to use because it, it works at a very, at the same level that HTML, JavaScript and CSS work. And then there is performance. Now performance, why is that important from, for a personal, uh, from a personal viewpoint? Because it, it again gives you instant feedback. There isn't very long compilation cycles. You get, um, you get a live reloading of your page, and um, and overall you don't have to worry about your final page is going to be uh, so fast that you don't have to waste a whole lot of time worrying about whether it's going to perform. And then uh, finally, I would say community. Svelte has a wonderful, amazing community. And I uh, strongly encourage you to join that community. Uh, so I think uh, that's another reason. All right, now there are a couple of reasons uh, why you might not want to learn Svelte. So it's relatively new. It's from 2015 or 2016, I think. Um, that's when it started. There was version one, two, and now three. Version three was released in, I think in April of 2019. So it's been just over a year. Um, so uh, compared to other uh, UI frameworks like EPU and uh, React and Angular, Svelte is relatively new. Next is it's not hugely popular. It should be. It should be the most popular uh, UI framework or compiler, but it's not. Uh, React has uh, the market uh, dominance, and uh, well, I don't know. I don't. I don't feel that it is. Uh, it should be the dominant framework. I do believe Svelte should be, but uh, it is what it is. So uh, Svelte is catching up. There is a huge movement behind Svelte. The community is amazing and they're pushing it forward. So Svelte will become very popular, but it's not the most popular framework at the moment. And the third reason would be maybe a smaller ecosystem. But again, that is not really a strong argument because Svelte uh, does, it needs so little, it uses the overall JavaScript ecosystem that it you don't need Svelte specific ecosystem. So again, if you if any of these things are super important, and finally, I guess, if all you want to do is get a job doing uh, front-end programming, then maybe, um, you know, 
you're not going to find that many jobs, uh, not today at least. So uh, I hope I have been able to motivate you to learn Swelt. Uh, what should you be doing next? I think there are some other very exciting technologies coming up. Deno or Dino or Deno or Dino, I don't know how to pronounce it, is out. Deno is the uh, successor to Node.js, uh, if you will. It's from the same uh, developer, Ryan Dahl, who created Node.js, and now he's doing Deno. Deno is, uh, I guess one could say, Deno is Node.js done better. And I will, I think uh, I'm excited about that. The other thing is Rust. Now Rust has been around for a very long time, 2015 at least. Uh, but Rust keeps coming back on my radar. I love the language. The only problem is I haven't had a chance to use it in production yet, but I keep uh, doing my own projects in Rust. And Rust uh, is, is a large language. It's not very easy to learn. It would take a lot of time investment to learn Rust, but boy, would it be worth it. It's like the C++ or C that should have been. Uh, so you can think of Rust as C, C++ done right. And uh, I like Rust very much. It gives you automatic memory management, but without garbage collection. So it has a fantastic memory management uh, semantics. And then finally, WASM, which is the WebAssembly. Now, uh, WebAssembly is, uh, I guess you could say, uh, just like JavaScript runs in the browser, so does WebAssembly, but then WebAssembly is, is fully compiled. It's almost oh, very, very close to machine code, uh, but it's not quite machine code, but it's portable, it's safe, it runs in a sandbox. So uh, someday WebAssembly will replace JavaScript. Maybe it won't really replace it, but whenever you need extreme performance uh, inside the browser and the sandboxed model that JavaScript provides, you can use WebAssembly. So I'm very excited about WebAssembly. One example of where I saw WebAssembly being absolutely uh, indispensable was uh, somebody had a WebAssembly module that implemented barcode uh, scanner. Now, I've seen barcode scanners written in JavaScript itself. They do work theoretically, but in practice they don't because they take two or three or four seconds just to scan a barcode. That's just too long. WebAssembly does it instantaneously, as fast as any native code do, would do. So again, very excited about WebAssembly. Now, what else should you be doing? You should be joining the Swell chat. By the way, this presentation will be linked from the video description, so you will have link, all these links available. You should join Swell Society. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, Swell chat is basically a Discord uh, chat server. Uh, where you can ask questions regarding Swelt and get help from the community. Swelt Society is an online organization. They organize online meetups. They uh, and they also organize uh, in-person physical meetups. Um, so, uh, you know, if you want to start a new chapter of Swelt Society in your in your city, then uh, that would be great. Um, and finally. Uh, subscribe to my channel, youtube.com slash Spinspire. My name is Jitesh Doshi. This channel is Spinspire. I keep uh, releasing uh, Svelte and other related exciting technology screencast videos uh, almost every week, uh, but as often as I can. I hope you learned something, and I hope you are psyched about learning Svelte, uh, just like I am about teaching Svelte. And I want to spread the word, good word about Svelte to the whole world. See you in the next video.